Okay, so we're talking about chondrichthyes today. Um, chondrichthyes is the, the first um, of the vertebrate classes that we're going to do presentations on. Um, Agnatha was a part of the last lecture over all vertebrates. Um, chondrichthyes is the, is the next class in complexity. And I just put this quote from one of my daughter's favorite movies. Sharks are not mindless eating machines. What's that from? Nemo? Yes. It's not finding me, but Nemo. So, shared characteristics. What makes something a member of the Conjurchthes class? Uh, first of all, they have jaws, um, unlike Agnathans. Agnatha, the word Agnatha means no teeth, no jaws. Uh, these have jaws. They're quite famous for jaws. As a matter of fact, there are movies named after their jaws. So, yes. Um, they are quadrupeds or tetrapods. They have four sticky outy things on their body um, that are roughly in the same places as all of the other quadrupeds that you will be pre presenting to us. So um, a bird has two wings and two legs. Uh, reptiles and amphibians, most of them, have four limbs and hind limbs, and mammals have front legs and back legs, and fish have pelvic fins and pectoral fins. So pelvis, where like legs would come out, rear legs would come out. They have fins there, pelvic fins. And pectoral, like your pectoral muscles, um, where arms or wings or forelimbs would come out, they have, uh, they have fins there as well. So they, this is the first group of quadrupeds or tetrapods that, um, that we have encountered. They have a cartilaginous skeleton. So their skeleton is a skeleton but it's not made of ossified bone. So um, your, your skeleton begins this way too. When you are a little baby embryo developing inside mama, um, first your skeleton forms out of squishy stuff, cartilage. And then as you develop, it ossifies, it becomes harder. And actually the ossification continues postnatal, continues after birth. Um, and that's why little, little kids, can fall off of things, and bounce is a bad word, but they tend, to, you don't usually see an infant with a broken leg, right? Or a little tiny baby with a broken arm. Most of the time, if they whack themselves, they bend and bounce back. Don't try that at home. But most of the time, you don't see infants with broken bones um, because their bones are not hard yet. Um, it takes some development for the bones to be ossified. For chondrichthyes, they are named cartilaginous fish. That's what chondrichthyes means because their skeletons never ossify. They're squishy all the time. Okay? Um, some of the cool things that they have, they have pelvic fins with claspers. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Claspers are weird things. They, are, they look like sausages off the back of the pelvic fins. Um, uh, and these claspers are used in reproduction. They are not reproductive organs, but they kind of are because they help guide the sperm into the female, um, but it's not, it's not like they have two penises. It's just weird parts of their fin that they use to like steer the sperm. Strange. But male sharks have them. You can tell um, a shark, if it's male or female, if you can see the pelvic fins, if they have these big things sticking out of them, then it's a boy shark. Um, they have a very tough skin covered by dermal teeth. If you see another, another kind of a fish, their scales don't look like their teeth. Their scales are different. But for chondrichthyes, their teeth are exactly the same structure as their scales. They're just bigger. So if you magnify a shark's scale and look at the picture of the scale next to the tooth, it's the same structure, it's just that the scales are smaller. So they're covered in teeth. And the names of those kinds of scales are called placoid, placoid scales. So this is what makes a shark a shark. Um, last couple of things that makes a shark a shark is a heterocecal tail or heterocircal tail. Um, hetero means different. Circle has to do with the lobes circle, right? Sounds like a circle. The, the lobe on one side of the fin is a different size than the lobe on the other side of the fin. 
the upper lobe is larger than the lower. Uh, all chondrichthyes have between five and seven sets of gills. Almost all of them have five, but there are some that have six and seven. Um, so five is normal. Six or seven are, are outliers, but they do show up. Um, they have teeth that are unattached to the jaws. You can grab a shark's tooth, which, you know, probably not a living shark, because that would go badly. But you could grab a shark's tooth and pull it right off. They, they're not buried in the gum and attached to the skull. If I grabbed your tooth and yanked, I'd have to pull really hard to get that tooth to come out. Um, for a shark, though, the tooth is just only slightly anchored in the gum. And it, is, uh, it doesn't attach to the skull. They're, they're non-rooted teeth. So the teeth come out all the time. And they are frequently replaced. So it's kind of an interesting strategy. Uh, if you have a saw and you keep cutting things with the same saw, eventually you have to do what to the saw? Change. You have to sharpen it. Well, if you're a shark and you're constantly chomping through fish, your teeth would get dull. But you can't really sharpen a tooth. So the best way to keep always having sharp teeth is to have teeth fall out and get replaced all the time. So none of the teeth in a shark's mouth are ever very old. They're always nice and sharp, and long before they would get dull, they fall out. So um, they're constantly being replaced. Um, sharks are, have a global range. There are sharks in all of the world's oceans. Um, more diversity is present in the tropics than in colder waters, but there are some sharks that are only in colder waters, and it's actually some of the more interesting ones are in the colder waters. Um, but sharks exist everywhere. You cannot go to an ocean and never see a shark. There, all, there will always be some kind of shark scape array. So let's look at some pictures. Um, this is a, just a, a bottom view of sharks, and you can see they're bendy, right? They're, they're very flexible bodies, and you can see that they have this cartilaginous skeleton just by the kind of bendiness that they have. Um, this is a shark, and you can see the claspers really well. They're just extensions of the pelvic fin, um, and they, when the male uh, shark releases his sperm, these help like funnel the sperm into the female, but they're not, it's not the same thing that like mammals do. Uh, so, <sighs> here we can see Mr. Alley's mouse, it's <laughs> dying. There you go. Pelvic and pectoral fins. Uh, a heterocyte circle tail. You can see that the top part of the tail is bigger than the bottom part of the tail. Um, this one has a clasper. Um, and then this one has five gill arches. So, oh, sharks have, and we, we talked about the fact that they have lots of sharp teeth that are loosely held. And you can see um, lots of teeth. And there's actually multiple rows of teeth there. You can see, especially right here, there's multiple rows of teeth. Some teeth are coming in um, to replace the ones that are falling out. Um, so these teeth are, are growing in the back of the mouth and moving towards the front. And when they get up too far, they just fall off. So um, he's got a constant tooth production going on in there. Rows of teeth waiting their turn. This is the skull of a hammerhead, which is my favorite shark, and we'll learn more about them in a minute. Um, here's some of the classes. Now, there's lots of words up here. Lots of words up here. Feel free to edit, okay? I was looking at this this morning, and I, I should have put fewer words. Feel free to edit, to paraphrase. Um, there are several uh, different orders, and I'm going to give them to you, uh, but there's, I'm not going to give you all of them. There's more than these eight. Um, first of them are in the subclass Elasmobranchii. Elasmobranchii are sharks, skates, and rays. Almost all of the orders of the class uh, Chondrichthyes are in that subclass. Um, the first one is Ragiformes. These are rays. There are 500 species of rays. And um, we have in Hawaii here some of the more interesting ones that people travel all around the world to swim with. Um, the, the manta rays are, are world famous. Um, and lots of people come to Hawaii to swim with them. 
rays, though, in general, flattened bodies, large, flexible pectoral fins, and a long, slender tail. Lots of them have spines um, on the tail and are stingrays, but not all of them have spines. So that's radiformes. Torpedinoformes, that sounds like torpedoes, right? And that's why they're called torpedo rays. These are the electric rays. Um, the snout is joined into a round disc with the pectoral fins. They look like a circle when you look at them from the top or the bottom. Um, they have an electric organ that can really deliver quite a punch. Um, and unlike other sharks, they have a horizontal tail fin. Most sharks have a tail fin that moves this way. But these guys have a, have a tail fin that moves this way. So they look more like a whale fin than a, tail, than a shark fin. Um, and then heteranchiformes. And this has to do with different kinds. I'm sorry, hexanchiformes. This has to do with six, um, six gill arches. You see the, the hexa in there. Um, this, this has six gills or seven gills. The sevens and the sixes are put in the same order. Six and seven gill sharks, they're, stark, they're stocky, they're thick looking. Um, they're ovoviviparous, which means that the eggs hatch inside the female. She doesn't lay eggs, she holds the eggs inside her. And then they hatch inside her and they come out looking like she gave live birth. But then after she gives birth to the babies, she passes out all the eggshells. So she held the eggs inside her until they hatched, and then the babies swim out. Um, they're deep dwelling and they're hard to study. Some of these guys look really, really, really weird. I'll show you some pictures in a moment. So um, we're, there's a lot we still don't know about the six and seven gill sharks. Okay? Um, again, you don't need to have all of the words up there. Feel free to edit them as we go. Oh, I hear hyperventilation. Let me pause while you finish. Pictures. This is an example of a ray. Um, and so you can see this is called a cow head ray. I don't know why that doesn't look like a cow to me. But um, it's a cow head ray. These are the rays that are all over Southern California. Uh, so when I was learning how to dive, I saw these guys all the time. Um, these are eagle rays that we do have here. Uh, but they're not as common here as they're slightly larger and more famous cousin, the manta ray. Um, these are just other rays that, that you may see out and about, and you can see that they've got a what looks like a full-on face underneath. But these, <laughs> these aren't eyes, these are nostrils. Um, but it totally looks like a face underneath there, right? So um, it looks like a fat fish. Yeah. Yeah. That face looks scary, actually. Yeah, they're they're really cool looking. I like them a lot. Um, these are the um, the, these are also rays, that, but they're actually these are skates. But they're in the same family. Um, the difference between a ray and a skate is the thickness of the of the uh, back part of the body. A ray would just have a long, slender, spine-like tail. A skate has has a bigger fuselage going all the way back. Um, and then manta rays are probably the most famous kind of ray. And people come, like I said, here from all over the world to and they can go big. Swim, swim with them. They get huge. Um, good news is they eat plankton, so they're not ever going to attack anybody, but they're really cool looking critters. Um, this is the electric ray, or the torpedo ray, and you can see the head and the pectoral fin have just been merged into a, a big circle. And then out at the end, you can just kind of see his, his tail. Um, and this is a video of one. Do you want to why it's called the electric ray? Yeah. Swimming really gently, like he's not afraid at all. And then this bowhead decides to touch it. Wait, what? Uh -huh. oh. I mean, to be fair, the, the fish swam up to him. It's like, oh, you want to be fat? Cool. Let me shot. pet you. And then, oh gosh. Oh, and then you can see him like spasm a little bit afterwards. Yeah, and it's underwater, so you don't hear it. And the guy didn't scream. But he like shocked and spasmed a little bit as he swam away. So 
if you are ever snorkeling and you see a big round head ray swimming don't at you, it. don't pet it. <laughs> Be smarter than Joe. Um, this you? is this is a six gilled shark. That, that looks like more than a eel than a shark. Yeah, they're weird looking. They're thick, round, stocky things, and they look very, very, very deep He's down. Smiling. Um, and that's the one that gives birth. That yeah, like looks like they give birth. This is a seven gill shark, um, and they're. Yeah, they're they're kind of strange. Oh, that's a shark. That? That's a shark. That's that the look. frilled shark. That doesn't look. That, really oh, that doesn't look frilled. It's, like... it's a frilled shark. It's uh, it's it's kind of terrifying. It looks like something out of the Alien movie. It looks like a. So. Like a um, <laughs> couple more orders of sharks. Um, Pristiophorus. Uh, these are the saw-toothed sharks. They look like they're swimming um, chainsaws. Uh, they're really cool. They have laterally protruding teeth of alternating length. They have two dorsal fins, and they can swim upstream and into brackish water. So in places like, um, let me pick one, like Kahana. Uh, if you guys ever go to Kahana and the, the stream comes out kind of wide and slow into the ocean, most ocean fish will not try to swim up the river because the water becomes less salty really fast. But these guys can spend some time in mostly fresh water, and they'll be fine. So um, these kinds of sharks you find in the lower parts of rivers, and they're, they won't spend their whole life there. They do need to be back in the ocean salinity, but they'll spend a day or two cruising around and seeing what there is to eat in the river before they go back out to the ocean. Yeah. Um, so, so that's an interesting opportunity. The uh, heterodontiforms. Hetero means different. Donta means teeth. These have different kinds of teeth. Heterodontiforms are called bullhead sharks. Um, and some of them are really small. Um, of all of the sharks I've ever seen scuba diving, you know, over 300 scuba dives in my log, um, I've seen sharks bunch of times. I've only been bit by a shark once, and it was one of these guys. Um, and it was really funny, because he was like 18 inches long. So it's always like the short dude that has the bad attitude and always wants to pick fights with people, right? Um, it's kind of the same way with these guys. The, the only I've seen huge sharks that if they had bit me, I would have lost a limb. And they just always swam past me like, hey, what's up? How's it? Um, but uh, the only time I've ever been bit by was something a little, a little bit bigger than my foot. Um, it was really funny. So these are the bullhead sharks. They have two different kinds of teeth. They have uh, incisors in the front, and then they have molars. Um, and uh, their incisors are not sharp, sharp and scary. These guys eat mostly clams. So they'll use their smaller teeth in the front to like dig a clam up, and then they'll crush it with molars in the back. Um, so when he bit me, it was more like being squeezed. There were no puncture marks. Um, I just kind of laughed at him as he swam away. Oh, thank you. <laughs> they have big ridges over their eyes. Um, blunt sloping snout. They look like some. It looks like they ran into a glass door. Um, and their but their eggs are gorgeous. If you ever see these guys' eggs laying around, the eggs have been called mermaid purses because they're so pretty to look at. I'll show you some pictures. Um, and then uh, the last one on this slide is the carcanchiniforms. Um, these are the big ones. These are the guys you don't want to encounter. Um, I'm sorry, that's not true. This is the biggest. Uh, by number of species, sorry, largest order, not size of animal, but number of species. Uh, long snout, two dorsal fins, some can tolerate fresh water. These are long, strung out, skinny, they look like they're sprinters um, when you see them in the water. Um, so like the makos and things like that that go really fast and are long, skinny guys. Uh, I see some people still writing all positive. Okay, this is the sawtooth sharks. So you can see that this is his mouth, and when he opens his mouth, he looks kind of like a, kind of like an alligator, right? It's a big, long thing, oh, but his teeth go out to the side. Yeah. Oh, uh, that thing. So they the teeth the teeth are used. I mean, they don't they don't go back and forth like a saw, but they will they will swipe their head and like you, yeah kill things, take off sections of fish with just swiping their their nose against something. Um, and oftentimes they'll have a long tooth and a short tooth and a long tooth and a short tooth. This guy, they all look like they're about the same length. Different species have different tooth patterns. Um, but 
the sawnose tar sh sharks are kind of cool. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, this guy's got a smaller mouth down here, and then, yeah, it's, it's kind of freaky looking. Um, it looks like the salt thing is like a juice. So yeah, it's grew. <laughs> it is <laughs> like, it's not like grew, yeah. These are the bullhead sharks. These are the guys that, that bit me. Uh, so I was cute. I was bit by one of these. That looks like a nut shark. Um, so, so big ridges over the eyeballs, horns in front of the, the first dorsal fin. Um, this one is called a horn shark, and he's that's the, the only shark that ever tried to take a piece out of me. Um, horn sharks have two different kinds of teeth. They've got little tiny incisors, and then they've got molars in the back. Um, so they'll like lift a clam out of the sand with the little teeth, and then they'll put the clam in the back and crush it. Um, this is their eggs. That's their, the egg. Their eggs are really cool. Some of them are spirals so like this, um, and some of them are, uh, are a little more ornate. They all have this little horn on the front of the dorsal fin. Uh, that that sets them apart as well. So that's a mermaid for his eggs. Yeah, these are the long, slender guys. This is the blue shark. Um, I I never got bit by a blue shark, but I was charged by one one night. I was uh, scuba diving at night, and uh, big big rock like the size of a house. And I was coming up over the top of the rock, and I had my lights on. I was looking for lobsters, so I had a I had a headlight, and then I had a uh, a spotlight in both hands. I'm looking for lobsters. And I come up over the rock and there was a blue shark that was sleeping on the far side of the rock and just like laying laying there. And I came up over all kinds of bright and shined it in his eyes. And you know, I wouldn't like it if somebody shined their spotlight in my eyes either. So he was grumpy and uh, he charged at me. I just turned my lights off and lay down on the rock and I watched him swim right over the top of me. And he kept swimming and I was like, okay, we'll wait here for just a little bit. <laughs> and I turned my lights back on. Oh, were you by yourself? No, I was with my buddy. So, but anyway, so he charged at me. He never met me, but yeah, I woke him up. Um, oh, that's what it meant. It's like all these like fish, like little tiny. Hi, Bruce. What kind of shark is this? Great white shark. No, this is not a great white shark. Um, this shark looks like. We have him here. Remember, this is a lemon shark. That's a lemon shark. Uh huh. Um, so you you uh you don't want to run into them. They're they're kind of they're kind of nasty looking. Um yeah, and I got this picture because I remembered your comment about why are there always little fish hanging around sharks. So these are remoras, and um, the remoras hang out on the sharks because he's a messy eater, and when he takes a bite of something, little bits fly off, and then these guys go eat his leftovers. It's kind of cool. Is that a little fish Thanks, on the chin? Mm -hmm. Um, this is the scalloped pelagic hammerhead, mm -hmm. and uh, my favorite shark. I'll tell you some stories of him in a minute. Um, this I didn't take this picture, but I've seen this kind of thing, the the hammerhead schooling above me, and it is just beautiful. It's just really, really pretty. Um, this is a tiger, and you can see why they're called a tiger shark. You can see the uh, the stripes along the side. We have tigers here. This is a black tip reef shark. Um, we have these guys here too. Um, this is more black tip reefs. Yeah. Last two groups I'm going to talk about laminiformes. These are the biggest by size kinds of sharks in the world. Very, very, very large mouths, a short nose, um, jars of jaw. Uh, Jaws are very loose from the skull, so when they open their mouth quickly, sometimes you see their teeth like shake um, because it's not attached to the skull at all. It's all just held there by soft tissue. They are ophagous. <laughs> this is nasty. They will always have twins. What? Uh, the female will produce two eggs. The male will fertilize both of them. Then. The eggs, they're ovoviviparous, so the eggs hatch internally inside mom, right? Ophagus means egg eater. The first shark to hatch inside mom will eat its sibling in the shell. Oh, that's horrible. So the first meal of the baby shark is its sibling. So these sharks will always fertilize two eggs, but only ever produce one offspring. So imagine that, like 
you think your sibling rivalry is rough. Uh, they eat each other inside mom before they even come out. They exist in all the global oceans. Um, this includes the great white and the basking sharks, which are the largest sharks in the world. And then the second, the, the other subclass that I wanted to reference is holocephali. Um, there's only one order in it, and that is the order Chimeriformes. Um, these guys have a jaw that's fused to the skull, which is an exception because most sharks have a, a, a jaw that is not fused to the skull. And these guys are weird. They have a retracting sexual tentacle on the forehead. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh huh. Uh huh. A retracting sexual tentacle on the forehead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't see a of that. Strange. Um, they they have a venomous spine on their dorsal fin, and they have three pairs of grinding teeth, and they've got fewer scales. Their skin is smoother. So the sperm does not come out, the retracting sexual tentacle on the forehead, but that tentacle is used to hold the female in place while mating happens. So it's a secondary sexual feature. But it's, it's kind of like a squid's tentacle, but it's only visible when they're mating. Otherwise, it's like retracted back into the meat of the, of the forehead. Oh. Weird. <laughs> Stay there. It's strange. Strange. It's like, it's like something from a horror movie. Um, I think it is a horror movie. Yeah. So, <laughs> pictures. Okay. This is a basking shark. It's the largest <laughs> shark in the world. Sometimes they're huh? What? <laughs> yeah. Um, you can see the gill arches inside the mouth, and it's a good thing that they don't actually try to eat people because they straight up swallow. Um, but the one that told me this. You know, it's possible. But then he would still die inside if it weren't a miracle. Uh, but big, big, big mouths. Um, and uh, this is oh, this is out of order. This is. This is a chimera, and you can see the, oh no, this is not a chimera. Um, this is another, another shark of that species called the unicorn shark. He's got a, a horn that sticks out of his nose. There's a, um, sorry, goblin shark, that's what these are called, goblin sharks. You can see the, this huge, like, fake nose, proboscis. Coming out. Um, this is a thresher shark. shark. Is it really that big? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. red tail. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the, the, the tail is, all, is as long as the body. Um, and uh, thresher is actually pretty commonly. It's like one really large foot. Yeah. Um, oh, this guy is a. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a turtle. This is another kind of basking shark. This guy is a sheep. And uh, he filter feeds. He's just a little smaller than his bigger cousins. This is another. Another basking shark. Um, okay. This is what? one that That's... was brought out. Oh, so yeah. Hold on. This is a uh, this is a basking shark that was caught. Just so you can see how big they are. Huge. Yes. Wow. Um, and then this, the great white, is in the same order as well. He's What's up, really, Bruce? Uh... Yeah. This is Bruce. Right. Boy, Bruce. Uh, hey, it's <laughs> yeah. It's a great picture. I love that picture. That one does a seal in its mouth. Yeah, their mouths are awesome. This is the chimera. So, um, this is the strange, doesn't belong in there kind of uh, kind of shark. Um, this spine on the first dorsal fin is venomous. If he sticks you with this, you get envenomated. You cannot see the sexual organ on the front of his head because it's retracted. Um, but on s these other pictures, they were taken with the uh, the tentacle extended. That's it. So, Wait, so what, which one is the face? Let's get it. Huh? Where is it? <laughs> it, it it's, it's normally pulled up and flat with the forehead, but it's extended when he holds a female in place for mating. I don't get how that comes out. That's, yeah. It's that weird. thing looks like, weird. Yeah, it's a whole separate thing. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> it's like a, his, his, his front lip just gets massive. Um, here's one that was, that, oh. uh, Died and they and it died with it extended. Oh, so that's sad. Well, it looks like the marriage never happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, the largest. So here's some amazing G whiz facts, right? You don't have to write these down. Oh, amazing yeah. G whiz facts. Largest living shark species is the whale shark, 41 feet long, 40,000 pounds. Okay. Um, and it eats krill. 
It eats free swimming little shrimp. Um, the largest great white shark actually measured is the Prince George Island shark at 6.5 meters or 21 feet long. And this is wow. him. That's him? Oh, she's like being um, so that's the biggest shark that they ever accurately measured. The largest shark species in history is the megalodon. Um, doesn't exist anymore, although some people think that it might still exist. It just hasn't been caught um, in modern history. Um, up to 60 foot long, it's related to the great white. So if you took a great white at 20-ish feet and you tripled its size, Okay, this is not a real picture. This is Photoshop, but this is helping you understand how big a megalodon would be versus a dude in a kayak. Okay, um, the was one back Okay, the this is again the great white today, and then the smallest megalodon fossils that they have found are about forty feet long, and the largest megalodon feet, uh, fossil they found was 60, 50 feet. Long. So this is just a sense of scale. I'm glad those megalodons are gone. Yeah. Um, the fastest shark in the world we have here, congratulations, is the short fin mako. Um, 60 mile an hour in short bursts. You will flat not outrun that shark. <laughs> You're going to die anyway. If he, if he wants to take a bite, good luck. He'll take a bite. Um, the smallest shark in the world is the dwarf lantern shark. That's a full grown individual. Um, that's, not, that's not a baby, that's an adult. So the dwarf lantern shark is. Is pretty cool. And how small is the baby then? Uh, smaller. I don't know. Small. Uh, the longest seal. lived shark is the Greenland shark. That looks like a seal, but bottom one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's, this is a seal That's being a seal. eaten oh. by a Greenland shark. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the Greenland shark is the long, longest lived. Um, we know of one individual that um, is at least 200 years old. So. So we very long lived creatures. Well, they tag them up. They do. Um, I'm just going to give you. Don't worry about writing this down either. I'm just going to give you a, a rundown of one individual species, so you can feel like you have a grip on what these things are. Um, this is my favorite shark species, the giant scalloped hammerhead. Sometimes it's called the Pacific pelagic hammerhead. It's, it's two. It's the same thing. Larger species of sharks. Some individuals tying the largest great whites. But most of the individual adults that you'll ever find are about 14 feet long. Okay, so two of me and a little more. Um, and uh, they, the largest spread binocular eyes um, per body length. So the distance between your eyes determines how good your depth perception is. If your depth perception is bad and I throw a ball at you, you try to catch it too early or you try to catch it too late. Um, the further apart your eyes are, the better they can triangulate an object and the better that they know how far away it is. Um, so these guys have the farthest spread eyes per body length. Now a blue whale's eyes are spread further apart, but the animal is a whole lot longer. So per body length, these are the largest spread binocular eyes in the world. So they've, they've got fantastic vision, fantastic vision. Also on their head, they have electroreceptors. All sharks do, but their electroreceptors also being further apart, they can tell better where is this thing making this electric field that I'm picking up. So they can swim over a reef and, and um, the electroreceptors will pick up the electrical activity of muscles of animals living on or around the reef. And they, anytime a muscle moves, it gives off a little electrical signal that these sharks can detect. So not only can they see you, they can feel the electricity of your body, and they can use that to hunt you, which is pretty awesome. Um, they also have their nostrils spread very wide, so they can smell. They can smell um, direction better. It's very hard. So if, think about it. Your ears are long ways away. Your nostrils are close by. It's easy for you to tell that a sound happened in some direction because your ears are far apart. But you walk into the house and you smell something and you don't necessarily go, oh, that smells this way, right? You just smell because your nostrils are too close together for you to determine where's the smell coming from. But their nostrils are spread very far apart. So they can smell direction, they can see direction, and they can perceive electricity with direction, which is pretty, pretty cool. They live in huge, huge schooling populations. They're not individuals. They, are, um, they, they hang out with their buds. 
Um, and sometimes thousands of these sharks will school together. Um, they have a small mouth for their body size. So 14 foot long shark, but his mouth is only going to be 16 inches wide, or six inches wide. So giant pelagic scallops, hammerheads, um, they eat small fish and they eat stingrays, which is why it's, oh, it's safer to be around them than some other sharks because they, they will look at you and say, you're too big to bite. Uh, I mean, unless you go and anger them and like punch them in the face. Oh yeah, they're, that's a good one. They're not, they're not gonna go after you. You're too big for a meal. Um, they are immune to stingray venom. Pretty cool. Um, Steve Irwin wishes that he had that trait. Um, he oh, yeah. died by stingray venom. Oh, that's um, so they will eat stingrays and you'll sometimes see scalloped hammerheads that have stingray stingers all over their bodies as the stingrays were trying to fight them off. And they stung them like crazy, but they're fine. They caught a, a hammerhead um, in a, you know, because you, you can fish these guys, their meat is good. Um, they caught one in a, in a fishery and it had 96 stingray stingers impaled in its body. And it was just living life with 96 stingray stingers. Oh, so um, this is what they look like. They've got lots of, lots of pictures of them. Um, they're really, really cool. Uh, the, the, Oh, yeah, so you can see they're big, but their mouths are not actually that wide for how big they are. Um, design and dominion. Hammerhead shark evolution is really funny to read evolutionists think about. According to evolutionists, the largest, most complex sensory system ever in the giant scalloped hammerhead appeared suddenly with no uh, preceding example of it slowly changing 20 million years ago. Now, we don't buy the 20 million years ago, but I'll tell you why it appears suddenly, because God made it. Um, but, but there is no pre-existing fossil line. There's nothing that changed into, changed into, changed into, changed into. Hammerheads just poofed, which you can't poof this evolutionarily, right? There is no discernible evolutionary pathway, no transitionary fossils at all which is a lot of new information, right? Um, other hammerheads, there are a couple of other species, but they don't think that one evolved from the other. They think actually that the hammerheadness appeared fully formed three different times. How do you get the same thing appearing fully formed three different times? You're wrong. That's just, that's how that worked. Um, the much simpler explanation is that God is a great designer. There's also no evolutionary story as to how these tooth scales came to be. No idea how teeth wind up on your skin. Um, and then the shark's cartilage and skeleton is a perfect design element for predators who need to turn and maneuver quickly, but don't need to support their weight out of the water. And I know I'm supposed to be done. I've got just one more run of pictures here. So this gorgeous head, they say, just happened. No, thank you. I love this image. I, I'll tell you my story when I've got more time of, of me seeing stuff like this. It's really cool. Conservation. Sharks can be responsibly fished and eaten. I love eating shark. You probably have eaten shark. Shark is yummy. But overfishing of predators throws off the ecosystem. And there are superstitious Eastern medicine things that are based on shark fins. It has led to the near extinction of several different species of shark. Um, uh, so people overfish because they eat it, people overfish because they want the fins. And then some sharks are just killed because we're afraid of them. Big sharks lead to fear, lead to hunting. Um, we, we need big sharks in the ocean to keep other fish populations in check. So just some images regarding this. Oh, wow. This is a commercial shark fishing operation. Um, and I wish I could tell you that these sharks would all be eaten for their meat. If that were the case, I wouldn't feel quite so bad. But these, these sharks will all be finned, and the shark fin will just be made into soup, and the rest of the carcass is thrown away. Um, these are, these are uh, this is a barge full of shark fin, um, and this is, a, this is a commercial shark finning operation in China, um, where sharks are hunted in massive numbers for their fins. Um, and, and sometimes you can even see sharks that have been finned alive, and then the shark just dies. Oh, um, that's messed up. That's mess. They, yeah. can't, they have yeah. to. So it's fine if you want to fish a shark and you want to eat shark, as long as you're
doing it responsibly, but we need to encourage people to exercise dominion and not abuse God's creation. So, you could like dissect 